All right. Well, uh, housekeeping aside, let's jump into the main topic of, of the show. So tonight we are doing a lore episode. Now, for those of you not familiar with or, or you know, relatively recent to the show, we do lore episodes from time to time. Lore essentially is the stories behind the, the Hearthstone cards. And so there is a very rich world in the, uh, the world of Warcraft. Many of our characters here in Hearthstone have extensive backstories. Um, and so this is a uh, part two of, of a four part series specifically regarding the old gods. And so last time we covered, um, uh, Yasiraj, if I'm mis- if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Yasiraj, you're close enough. And, uh, you did, did a whole episode on that. It's, it's on YouTube. If you want to find it, uh, if you go to our website, there's a, there's a separate page for the lore and you can, you can uh, check that out. And I, so, I still to this day say your charge. I know it's wrong, but I always do it. I'm in your uh, charge now. You with <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So this is part two. Uh, and, and I think we had talked about doing it in a different order, but uh, the voyage to the sunken city uh, expansion was just announced. And, and so we have decided to cover Nazoth tonight because uh, Nazoth actually fits in very well with um, the theme of the upcoming expansion. And so uh, we'll also be doing a Sunken City lore episode, uh, but we need to wait for the rest of the cards to be revealed and, and kind of see where, where it goes. This this sort of story tonight will be centered specifically around Nazoth, and we'll touch on a couple of, of our Sunken City things, but we aren't going to go too deep. Um, anyways... I've done enough talking. Let me pass the mic over to Goliath and we will get started here tonight with All right. the lore of Nizoth. Yes, gather around for a story. Uh, so yeah, as, as Nate said, this is essentially both a part two of the four parts here of the Old Gods while simultaneously being a part one preview for Voyage to the Sunken City. Uh, yeah, it's just happened to work out this way. We were initially planning on covering Yogg Saron, hail his randomness, but uh, this has kind of forced our hands because it's going to be relevant. We're talking about Sunken City stuff, so we may as well kind of give everyone a bit of uh, preview knowledge here to give some background so we don't have to go off on extreme tangents when talking about the Sunken City. So, we are just going to start out by having a recap of some of the uh, common origin elements of the Old Gods that we discussed back in Yashiraj. Um, let's give Nate and Sheep a little pop quiz right here. What do you guys remember that we discussed uh, last time? I just remember the uh, parody song of... Uh... <laughs> Based on Ra Ra Rasputin. Yeah, so so the 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 old gods and the 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 like. I just remember old gods and elementals and titans and the old gods are are like, you know, uh, kind of like stuck in the ground and they they you know corrupt what's what's around them and they're in different parts of the. Uh, the, the world over here. Yeah. I think that the thing that stuck out the most to me was the uh, guarded piece of one of the old gods. Um, I can't remember who was guarding that, um, but, but that was the, the part that stood out to me the most. Cause that was like the, uh, that aesthetic and that general idea was probably the spookiest part. Like not just the old gods, the like kind of etherealness, but then what the more hum- human humanoid characters we're doing with that corrupted piece so that that was that was the part that really just kind of stuck with me and that really gave me nightmares but kind of <laughs> yeah yeah old gods do have that it's that lovecraftian vibe that thing that these are aberration beings beyond our comprehension the more you learn about them the more you lose your sanity um it, it's that type of creature that we're talking about here so to recap where the old gods come from, they are manifestations of the void, which is basically the embodiment uh, in the cosmic uh, world of Warcraft of emptiness, of consumption, of the lack of anything. And the void 
by its very nature, wants to destroy the physical universe, just consume everything. And so in order to do that, uh, the void beings called the Void Lords manage to create the old gods, briefly push open this hole into the physical universe. They couldn't uh, do anything more than that. It took a lot of their power to just do that. And they just threw all the old gods out into the universe and they go landing on random planets like fleshy meteorites. Now, oh, yeah. uh, so there are multiple old gods on other worlds that we don't really know about. But the important thing here is for our world, uh, the center world of the story of Azeroth, now, four old gods that we know of, because rock gods can always add more, uh, landed on Azeroth with the goal of basically corrupting the soul that is inside the world. Azeroth is a very special planet that has a baby titan inside it, a vast, powerful cosmic being that will one day kind of hatch out of it like an egg or something. Uh, but the idea is that the old gods can worm their tendrils down to the very core of the world and corrupt the world's soul, then the Void Lords have a corrupted titan that can kind of do their bidding of consuming all of the universe. And then, uh, as part of that dominating the entire world, there were the naturally existing elemental lords on Azeroth. Uh, we'll get to those in just a little bit on another slide. But uh, the thing is that basically the old gods land and they take over everything. And uh, the image that we have right up here is what is called the Black Empire, when the old gods ruled the entire world and were essentially huge monoliths. Like these things are the sizes of cities, uh, their physical bodies. And uh, they secreted a whole bunch of uh, gross little minions from their bodies. Uh, they had some very insectoid-like ones that were called the Akir and would later become what we know as Mantid, Nerubians, uh, Silithid, uh, ones that you're probably familiar with from some of the Hearthstone cards. Yeah, those uh, basically got uh, uh, secreted out li like, like lice from old gods' bodies or something. And then you have Faceless, which are properly called Naraki, uh, which are also, uh, that's where they come from. They just kind of like like the maggots coming out there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really gross when you think about it. But uh, <laughs> I like how even explaining how, how they kind of are secreted, for lack of a better term, is in and of itself kind of just like hair raising. <laughs> yes. It's such a this gross word. This is the word. nature of the old gods. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so that have, and these are the minions. So like you see an image, it's, it's not just their bodies. You see like obelisk and, and, uh, city type of things around it. Uh, those are the ones who built it, the faceless and the insectoid Akir. Uh, so they're the ones who constructed all that as the old gods servants. But, um, the old gods were not without their competition. Uh, they had to deal with the elemental lords, which are kind of the natural manifestations of elemental energies that occur on many worlds, Azeroth included. Uh, and there were four, only three of which are Hearthstone cards, two of them from the very beginning, one of them with the first expansion, and still we're missing the fourth. I'm sorry, this, this just drives me crazy. Uh, but what we have is uh, Ragnaros the Fire Lord, who most Hearthstone players know. He is very iconic, die insect. He's a tiki lord in battlegrounds. Uh, he, he's everywhere. Uh, then we have Alakir the Wind Lord, uh, who again is uh, was one of the first ones. And yeah, like swatting insects. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, he just. Uh, Alakir just swats the insect, but Ragnaros is far more direct and complete with die insect. Uh, but, and then we have Neptalon, who is the Lord of Water, uh, who came out with the Goblins vs. Gnomes expansion. And the one that we are lacking still is Therizane the Stone Mother, uh, who is Lord of the uh, Earth Elementals. And so essentially the old gods completely dominated and made the elemental lords, their minions, the great generals in their army. 
Now, when the Titans came along, these great cosmic beings of order who want to be able to nourish life uh, for, and especially when they find that Azeroth it has a Titan inside of it that needs to be nourished and saved, uh, they see there's these old gods that are kind of a real big problem here. So they uh, decide to fight them. Uh, they are too big to have much damage uh, control on their own because, as I analogy I used last time, is it's like if you have your sandbox and there's a bunch of ants around, you can try to smash the ants, but you're probably just going to smash like all the sand castles that are built inside it as well. And so in order to prevent from damaging the world itself, they create these... Uh, smaller creatures uh, called the Titan Keepers that uh, help to fight the Old God's armies. Now, what we talked about in last time with Yashiraj is this one Old God that was so powerful that the Titan Keepers couldn't defeat it, and so the Titan Amun Thule had to reach down and yank it out of the ground. Yeah, that's right. They like, because when the Old Gods, that they're like, like... It, like embedded into the the, the mm -hmm. surface of the earth, right? And like and very, very thick roots. Roots. Like, it looks, it looks it, kind of like the a Judas Priest cover uh, album cover for like Ram It Down. <laughs> <laughs> or if you have like I don't know if you guys know I live in the Midwest, so uh, there's a lot of prairie in the area, or at least used to be in some areas. Uh, and one thing that I learned is that the prairie grass. It's the roots go really, really deep and like hold it all together. You cannot pull out her grass without huge clods of the soil coming with it, going mm -hmm. very deep. And that's kind of what the old god's tendrils are like. And since it caused so much damage when Yashiraj was broken out, I actually created this huge hole that was bleeding arcane energy. And in order to stop it, the Titans had to kind of fill it with water, slap a magical band-aid over it. That would become the Well of Eternity. We'll get back to that later. Um, but since they were like, yeah, okay, we can't really risk doing this with the other three old gods, they instead decide that all they can do is imprison them. So they defeat all of the other old gods and create magical prisons around them, bury them deep within the earth, uh, and do their best to uh, nullify any influence that they have. It doesn't work entirely, because over time, over the many ages, those barriers are going to start to weaken a bit. Uh, but at least at the start, it does a pretty good job of sealing them away. Uh, and Zoth is actually the very first of the old gods to be imprisoned. Actually considered to be the weakest of the four old gods. Though we're still talking old gods here, so that doesn't mean he's a pushover, just in comparison. Because they fought with each other too, honestly. These are beings of pure chaos and madness. They're not teaming up. They, they fight each other. And the Zoth actually once lost a huge fight against Yashiraj, hmm. which is why uh, Yashiraj had the, the huge territory of the Black Empire that you may remember seeing the map. And Nazoth is just kind of has this teeny little spot off to the side of what we now have as the Eastern Kingdoms. Uh, so, yeah, he, he had the... Uh, the, the, the small the smaller share of things actually uh, and was defeated first but but Nazoth is clever Nazoth's plan is generally to wait things out let your enemies destroy each other gather lots of influential pawns and then be able to spring them on the world when everything is weakest and this is a strategy that we're going to see used a couple times here throughout the show uh, so. That makes yeah. the mechanics of both of Nazoth's cards just makes so much more sense now, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I love about this. When you can connect the way that the card works with who the character is in it. And it's why for a lot of the time, some people might look at the fact and go, why the heck are they putting that into the game? I look at it and go, oh, I see what you're <laughs> doing there. And that's why I'm here. I'd love to share that with everyone. Uh, so, 
we have the first of uh, Nathoth's major conquests here, the first of those mighty pawns that he gathers, who is none other than Deathwing the Destroyer, uh, who is... Everyone in Hearthstone knows Deathwing. He's been around from the start. He has, what, like five different card versions of him now. <laughs> Uh, so Deathwing was originally a dragon named Naltharian the Earth Warder, who was one of the original dragon aspects. Uh, uh, original creatures that were actually evolved elementals into beings called proto-drakes. Um, and a team of five, Naltharian among them. The other ones are the other dragon aspects. You, go, you know, Malgos, Ysera, Alexstrasza, Nazdormu. And Naltharian were a big team that took down Galakrond, who you remember Galakrond from Descent of Dragons. Uh, and so, as a reward, the Titans blessed the dragons that uh, accomplished defeating Galakrond with special powers to make them guardians of the world, of different aspects. Like, Nazdormu got time, uh, Alexstrasza got life, Malagos got magic. Uh, now Tharian was given custodian over the earth. He had a very strong tie with the earth. Hmm. A little problem here. The earth is also where the old gods are imprisoned. And so through that connection, Nazoth in particular, like all the old gods had a bit of part to play, but Nazoth was the, the spokesman for the group here. Uh, wormed their way into the mind of this noble uh, guardian of the world and the burden that he had to bear. Because that's like, y you know, like those uh, things like, oh, uh, you know, you're carrying the world on your shoulders, the weight of the world on your shoulders. Uh, for uh, Naltharian, it was rather literal. This was a ridiculously unbearable burden that he... Uh, just, just driving him crazy over time anyway, and the old god seized on that weakness and drove him mad, uh, eventually turning him against all of the other dragons and uh, corrupting his entire dragon flight. And the dragons, uh, the black dragon flight, would become uh, very uh, chief agents of the old gods uh, when called upon to do so. Uh, so we talked a lot about them back in our Nixia's Lair topic about all the Deathwing family and all <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I'm just going to take this t two seconds to plug. Uh, yeah, we do lore episodes from time to time, and, and typically we'll try to match them to what's going on in Hearthstone. And so our last one was specifically on um, Anixia and the Black Dragonflight, and we got into... Uh, the whole family, really, which is Death, Deathwing and Rathion and, and some others. And so uh, if you want to listen to that, uh, go to our website, bornsbewildhs.com. We've got a separate page for the lore stuff, and uh, we'll have all of the lore episodes posted there. So if you want to do a deep dive into the Black Dragon flight and get the whole history of uh, Deathwing and Anixia and uh, Nefarian and, and the rest, uh, really cool. Um, have, a, have an opportunity to do that. Check out the website. and. And uh, you'll find it there. Okay, Absolutely. sorry, uh, plug is done. Carry on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that is essentially, again, we're, we're not going to rehash the entire story of the Black Dragon flight here. People can listen to it and what you just plugged. Uh, but the important thing here is that uh, Deathwing is basically Nizoth's first major agent, first major ace in the hole right here that he has under his control and uh, can call upon. Deathwing kind of goes around, does his own thing for a while, uh, but any time that Nazoth wants to pull on that leash, Deathwing is going to come running, willingly or not. Uh, <laughs> then we have our, our second story, and this is the one that's going to tie into Sunken City. So there's Several things that I'm going to kind of glaze over a bit here that we're going to go into a bit more detail about in our next lore episode. But uh, essentially, what we have here is where the Naga come from. So, a very long time ago, in fact, 10,000 years ago, uh, there was the Night Elf Empire, which is where Illidan and Tarada and Malfurion all lived, because, man, they're really old, and they must have amazing moisturizing cream or something, <laughs> because they do not look it. Uh, 
But essentially, there was the night elf race ruling most of the world. And it was still all one big continent at this point. Uh, the continent as a whole was called Kalimdor. Uh, and Queen Ajara was the ruler of it. Uh, she was extremely charismatic, extremely powerful, one of the most powerful mages slash sorceresses, uh, wielders of the arcane, that has ever been in World of Warcraft. So it, if people are claiming up here we have another mage skin, there's not really another option that they could have mage Ashara. She is the arcane mage in her heyday. Um, but Ashara got greedy and ended up making a deal with the demons of the Burning Legion of helping them invade Azeroth because they'll give her even more power. Like, she was so powerful that some of the demon generals uh, made sure not to cross her. She was wow. so powerful that she essentially thought that she was going to get to marry Sargeras or something and become a cosmic goddess. Uh, plan didn't quite work out because the Burning Legion was turned away in what we call the War of the Ancients. Again, this is where uh, people like Illidan and Malfurion and a whole bunch of other characters come into play that helped to drive away the demons. Uh, actually, uh, using the Dragon Soul, uh, which we have that weapon in uh, Hearthstone that uh, was initially, in fact, created by Deathwing and used to betray the other dragons, uh, but it was used to help to suck all the other demons back through a portal and destroyed the Well of Eternity. Because again, this here's that Well of Eternity again. This is that spot where Yasharaj was yanked out. It was so full of arcane power. This is what the Night Elf Empire drew on for a lot of their arcane power. And they pummeled the depths, increasing more and more power. Uh, that's actually what attracted the demons to it in the first place. Uh, but now everything has exploded. The world is uh, shattering. This is, in fact, what we call the shattering. Uh, and uh, Or the sundering, rather, I should say. It's the sundering. And so the big, glorious capital city of Zinashari is right on the edge of the Well of Eternity that has just exploded. And it's sinking down. There's a lot of drowning elves right now. Uh, several of the rebels, uh, who again include our favorite night elf uh, heroes, uh, are, they make it to dry land and stuff. Uh, they're protected by the wilds and everything. However, Queen Ajara and the nobles, who are called the Highborn, these are the night elves who were not into the Druidism at all. They looked down at them as backwards hippies. Uh, these are the ones who are the high-powered arcane sorcerers here. Uh, they're all drowning, going deep into this sinking water where the land is collapsing around them. There's nowhere to swim to. They're all down. And Ajara... Uh, is approached by a little fish. A little fish that is a manifestation of Nazoth. And this is where our little uh, Battlegrounds uh, minion comes into play. If anyone has ever wondered, why do we have a fish as part of Nazoth's Battleground hero ability? It's because this fish is just a tiny little fraction of Nazoth's uh, power manifesting into the world. And Nazoth and Ajara come to a little deal. Uh, he initially says that she's going to be a servant. But she still has a lot of her guile and charisma, even while literally drowning. And she's not going to just be desperate and completely take him up on the order. She manages to negotiate that she's not going to be a slave to Nazoth. She's going to be his queen. It's like the whole being uh, the demon queen didn't quite work out, so now she's going to content herself with being the the old god's queen. How, uh, can I can I ask you a question though? Like he, yes, yeah, I mean I understand. Like the, the you paint a, a vivid picture, right? So the world is collapsing. We're underwater. Everybody's dying, and like the little fishy swims up, red glowy eyes. It's like uh, <laughs> you uh, want to buy a funnel cake, uh, but no, it's like hey, you uh, want to not die and be the queen instead <laughs> I yeah, mean, essentially so 
uh, okay yeah i i, I you know I, i've always seen this like the fish of nazoth in battlegrounds and had just no clue like why a fish like it, it it never dawned on me and so it just goes to show right that hearthstone has such a rich uh backstory in lore if you know what you're looking for or if you you know you go behind the scenes because you could play you know how many people play battlegrounds all the time without ever knowing any of this and just be like well that's kind of weird that they picked the fish but okay <laughs> um and so yeah okay okay so well, that makes sense and so in this picture here we see um the the queen underwater essentially like talking to the fish but this is like she can't like breathe underwater or anything, can she? I mean, uh, I guess like she's Nizoth a. Nazoth is briefly giving her like a pause on the death to talk and make the deal. Uh, but actually, initially, when she tries talking back to him, uh, he briefly withholds, and she's suddenly drowning for a little bit. Has that slight panic, but. because he just wanted to show her, uh, before uh, solidifying the deal, that yeah, you know, I could. I could let you drown here, just reminding you of that factor. Uh, but yeah, no, it's so, so she has a little bit of a pause yeah, there. Right? Yeah, power move, exactly. That's what okay. they're all about. Well, and, and uh, I don't want to go too far off topic, but like for those of you watching the video version or watching this live, like you'll see here on the screen, one of the pictures is from the cinematic in World of Warcraft. There's the card from Battlegrounds. And then the third picture there is actually a screenshot from the uh, Voyage to the Sunken City cinematic. Like, it's like a blink and you'll miss it. But like, I, I mean, we can get into predictions later, but like they have not announced Nazoth yet or Little Fishy Nazoth yet. But like, Maybe the writing is on the wall. <laughs> so, anyways, all right, carry on, carry on. Yeah. Um. So it also, Goliath, like you were saying, she she has must have some amazing like a e either way with words or just like prowess herself. She has because, nat twenties on her charisma score constantly. <laughs> yeah, because if if she's like in the clutches of death and he controls her fate, and yet she still negotiates from. You, you will do my bidding and be my slave to you will be my queen. Like that's, that's a really big swing there. Mm -hmm. Like that is, that's, that's a, wild. Her logic essentially goes that you can let me die, but then there'll be no one to help you out at all. And you'll be down here as the God of nothing. Uh, that, that, that's literally her words there, the God of nothing. And be, because he shows her this vision of the Black Empire in its glory day, a horrible glory, uh, and goes like, I am a god and serve me. And, and she's like, no, I'll be the queen. <laughs> It's a, she, she she is very much banking on uh, what Dazoth wants uh, rather than just be desperate for her own life here. And yeah. so as a result, uh, she and all of the highborns, like the, the powerful sorcerer aristocrats who are drowning along with her, are all transformed into the Naga. And the Naga are Nazoth's principal servants here. So all the other old gods have uh, have their little bug minions, uh, the Mantid for Yasharaj, the uh, Silithid uh, and Karaji for Cthulhu, and the Nerubians for Yaxaran. But uh, Nazoth breaks the mold here. He prefers the sneaky fish people to bugs. And well, he's, he's I, I would probably prefer that too. Well, and Nizoth is underwater, right? So when we see the card like Nizoth, God of the Deep, and where they all kind mm -hmm. of land, okay, Nizoth is underwater, and so it, it, I, I suppose it makes sense somehow that these uh, now elves are underwater, and now they need to be some kind of like fish people, kind of. So right, so then that so that they can survive now. Right. Uh, and, and so we see the artwork here, the artwork on the screen, for those of you listening to, to the audio version, we've got the, uh, the new hero uh, portrait, the mage skin for Queen um, Ashara. 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 Yeah. And then the card, the, the um, neutral legendary card, and you can compare kind of the before and after of uh, the 
I guess, elf form versus the Naga form. And then in this kind of in the background a little bit, you, I, I guess what we see here, and I think Goliath could probably describe it, but this is her still kind of floating in, in the water, but, but Nazoth is, I, I guess you would say like, presenting a, a vision to her of, yes it, it's, of, it's a vision like of this the is black empire okay okay oh this is, like you were saying and it's terrible glory mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense with all the crazy tentacles everywhere and she's like exactly she's okay. flexing for her. <laughs> <laughs> all this as that could be yours as far as the eye can see yes everything the darkness touches <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What and about so that bright place? You must never go there. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Well, yeah, so so this is a big change, right? So it's changing mm -hmm. appearance and stuff, and then not only her, but you were saying the uh her her people essentially, right, turn from yeah. their uh are are now the new race uh called Naga. Absolutely. That is where they come from. And that's about all we're going to go in for now. If you want to learn more about Naga, tune in to our next episode where they are going to be a major focus. But we can't spend too much time dwelling on this right now because uh, this is just a Nazoth step two right here. We, uh, we, we've got more uh, Nazoth plans that have to come unfolding where he's going to bring everything together in uh in a big attempt right now to fully go on and take over the world no not take over the world bring about what is called the hour of twilight the end of all things the goal of the old gods to have everything destroyed and corrupted but first <laughs> nate yeah, all right, we've got a song. We've got a song here. And for those of you not familiar, we've done many uh, parody songs over the years. Uh, Goliath has done some phenomenal ones and uh, oh, yeah. has has one for you here tonight. So we're just going to we're going to take a brief intermission and play the song and then we will uh, continue with the rest of our story of Nizath. So here you're in for a treat. Let me uh, just just play it right now. I just need to uh, scroll up in our chat a tiny bit. Here you go. As I walk through the halls of Naya, loath the sleeping city, I take a look at my mind. And I see there's nothing pretty, cause I've been mind blasted and man so long. And all the old gods know my mind is gone. Yes, Shiraj might be dead, but his heart still holds our power. And the Shah are always looking for new rage to devour. You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking. Or your pride, fear, and hatred will see your last squawking. The seven-headed god might have had the greatest girth. But others are still buried down in the earth. Fool, Cthulhu, and this madness are down in that garage. A brick apart your mind, reassemble it like a collage. Been spending most our lives living in the old god's paradise. Power costs a heavy price living in the old god's paradise. The tentacles and many highs living in the old god's paradise. Filled with horrific sights, living in the old god's paradise. Thrust from the void with these abominations, beings of pure madness, craving domination, enslaving elementals, spawn in the faces. No rhyme and no raising to their goals, destructive and nameless. Yucks will run the beast with a thousand maws. The god of death drains your hope, leaves you without a single cause. Spreading nightmares to the trees and making flesh and stone, no one can comprehend them. Their full rapper unknown. God of the deep lies down in the blackest sea, turning night elves into Naga to brick and free. The Zoth was the weakest but the longest surviving, with secret blades of power and pawns so conniving. Why were we so blind to see this madness reveals every truth to me? Been, been spending most our lives living in the old God's paradise. Nothing that is sanctified Living in the old God's paradise We all moan and agonize Living in the old God's paradise 
while I tear my sacrifice Living in the old God's paradise Nile of the waste, return and black empire Aiming for the hour of twilight to transpire The Huna aiming to spread rotten pestilence around And it seems our task keeps on wanting to be found Mantin, Arubians, Karaji, and Dakir Elemental beings and horrific nightmares Corrupted dragons, cultists, mighty forces encompass It's clear to me what the inevitable result is Then spending most our lives living in the old God's paradise no point in no more lights living in the old god's paradise. The body's reach enormous heights living in the old god's paradise. There's no days and endless nights living in the old god's paradise. Why were we so blind to see this madness reveals every truth to me? Tell me why were we so blind to see This madness reveals every truth to me Well done. That was so good. That was so good. Thank you. What's crazy? That's incredible. That is incredible. Uh, That's incredible. <laughs> to record, like to write it and record it like immediately before the show tonight is even more impressive. <laughs> and uh, I love it. So um, that's amazing. The, yeah, uh, there's some elements in there. We're going to touch on exactly what, uh, what I'm talking about and some of that and other well we're gonna have to wait until the other two old god episodes so hey all right okay so foreshadowing right okay so we now are picking up in the um i guess the the cataclysm and a, a fight now and uh, there's there's some death wing and some of the elementals and so let's uh let's bring that up here Right. So we're uh, we're skipping quite a bit of time here, over 10,000 years to uh, the modern time and uh, all the way up past the first few expansions of Warcraft. So where the situation currently stands is uh, back in the uh, vanilla World of Warcraft, the classic stuff, near the end of that, uh, the adventurers, the forces of Azeroth, uncovered Cthulhu and managed to defeat it. Again, we're just going to, we'll talk more about that another time in the Cthulhu episode. And then later on, uh, during the fight against the Lich King, uh, they happened to stumble upon yogg Saron's place, and yogg Saron ended up getting defeated. And so Nizoth is kind of the only old god left right now. Uh, and he sees that... This is the time, like, I uh, want to make sure that not too much time passes because it's clear that the creatures on Nazareth are capable of defeating old gods. Really don't want that to happen to me, so let's strike first. And, as a bonus, the world is weak right now because everyone is exhausted from defeating the endless armies of the Undead Scourge and Lich King. I mean, th there's some heavy losses that were taken there. And so, if you're going to strike, strike at a wounded target. Uh, this is where he gathers all of the pawns into play so far. Deathwing is infused with even more old god power than ever before. So much so that it even further starts to tear his body apart, which is why it always looks like, you know, your Deathwing is bleeding lava or something. And uh, Nizoth uh, sends uh, another key element that we haven't quite touched on yet, but uh, the Twilight's Hammer cultists are a group 
that a fanatical old god of worshippers who want to bring about the end of all things. Uh, we briefly mentioned some of this aspect back in our Stormwind episode when we talked about Dark Bishop Benedictus, uh, who mm -hmm. is one of the uh, members there. Uh, Cho Gall is the leader of the Twilight Sammer, uh, who is the one who wields the Hammer of Twilight, so that we have our little card up here on the screen. And so... Uh, the Twilight Tamer are one of the big uh, forces that Nizoth has in terms of, like, you know, basically a personal uh, army in that regard. Uh, and he sends some of them to go down and uh, put some, bolt some metal plates onto Death Wayne to try to hold them together. Like, uh, it's like, like riveting a Band-Aid onto your skin or something. Like, very painful, but but it's keeping him together. It's it's doing the job. It's the uh, it's the the WD forty and uh, wrench and everything. The duct tape. It's the duct tape that keeps Deathwing together. That's great. Well, you had mentioned in in the lore episode last time of the Black Dragon fight that he's like right. He's trying to contain pure chaos, and there's just so much like energy and destruction trying to like burst out from inside that he's like literally falling apart. Yeah, his body's tearing itself apart. It's it's it, uh, it's not it's not a healthy uh, dragon physiology, frankly. It, it's very it's like analogous to like it's it's like Darth Vader, right? You you, mm -hmm. you know, becoming a Sith Lord, the body is breaking apart. You gotta gotta uh, uh, add on some uh, spare parts here to uh, keep things <laughs> together. Yeah, I, that's I a fair we were comparison. About old gods, not gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> old gods gnomes uh, jedi sith whatever <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so deathwing is essentially going to be like the the grand general who's coordinating all of nizoth's other forces so some of the other aces in the hole that nizoth has is he's gonna pull out those enslaved elemental lords again uh now two of them don't follow along. Neptalon and Therizane manage to uh, break the binds that shackle them to the old god's will over the centuries, uh, and so they don't want to be controlled. But Ragnaros and Alakir, our old buddies, happen to be more aggressive, let's say, and they're not even so much that they have to, but they want to work with Nizoth anyway, because he promises them a free world of chaos to rule over and destruction as they see fit. Uh, with, uh, you know, the, you can put volcanoes anywhere that you want. You can have huge tempest winds with nothing to get in the way, and, you know, that sort of stuff. Um... And so they are all sent to do uh, little missions of their own. The Naga are sent out, actually, because, well, Neptalon not obeying Nazoth is a bit of a problem. So the Naga are sent to go and try to uh, constrain him there and take over the elemental plane of water. And basically, there's a whole bunch of different plots and plans that Nazoth puts into play, and only one of them needs to work in order for the Hour of Twilight to be brought about. Miraculously, because we are player characters, uh, we are able to stop every single one of them. Stop uh, Nazoth from using the Naga to uh, take over the area called Veshir, where they're posing the threat to Neptalon. Um, we're able to stop Ragnaros from burning down Mount Hyjal, uh, which is a very strong uh, druidic area with lots of wild gods and stuff. Uh, and Alakir is attempting to seize the Forge of Origination from the Tolvir, who you may remember from Old Doom, uh, Secrets of Old Doom. This is that area right here that uh, Alakir is uh, causing some trouble in and essentially trying to sees this thing that the Titans built that can completely destroy all life on Azeroth as a reset button if there's too much corruption. Um, but, you know, make it old gods so that instead destroys everything and spreads corruption. And so that there's all of these different plans. You know, Twilight's Hammer is doing their thing. We managed to stop all of them and eventually take down Deathwing himself, finally, uh, in the big final raid of the expansion and during that time 
Uh, as the last is Jethert, Nazoth pumps Deathwing even more full of the crazy, destructive, chaotic power, and he just looks even crazier than he does on any of the art right here. If if you do the final raid, we don't have any images of this particular, but uh, he's That's just where like he is power incarnate. Kind of, yeah. Like, like he, he's even more lava and stuff that, that you see him here. And, like, den lava mixed with old god tendrils and all that. But, uh, that's all taken care of. And Nazoth is, um, he's ca kind of lost a lot of powerful allies here. The Twilight uh, Hammer Cult is still a thing, but severely reduced in power. A lot of the leaders are gone. Um... The Elemental Lords are both taken out, uh, and there's no one in charge of the Fire Air Elementals for quite some time, actually. Uh, and Deathwing is down, but the Naga is still around. So, you know, Queen Ajara didn't take a personal hand in any of this, so uh, she is still very much available. And uh, she is kind of what Nazoth is going to rely on for the next stage here, as a uh, backup plan in order to get loose. Uh, so, right now, we are going to jump forward a few more Warcraft expansions to the island nation of Kul Tiras. Uh, the Kul Tirans are a very naval-focused uh, nation. Uh, in fact, this is where Jaina Proudmoore is from. Her father was the Grand Admiral Dalis Proudmoore of the nation of Kul Tiras. And there are several houses of Kul Tiras, you know, noble houses that kind of specialize in different things. Uh, one of them is called House Stormsong, and they have their specialty with what's called the Tide Sages. Uh, these are kind of shaman-esque like uh, priests who bless all the ships of the Kul Tiran Navy and make them especially seaworthy, uh, who have a special control over the tides. Um, and they are led by Lord Stormsong. But uh, again, similar to how there's the whole, when you have a strong link with something, and that has a connection with evil, that's how they got Deathwing. Nizoth and Queen Ashara are going to use that to influence how Stormsong and the Tide Sages. And uh, we can see with our little picture right here, um, Stormsong ends up growing some tentacles uh, when he pledges himself to Queen Ashara. And uh, we have many of them are turned into what's called Kathir. Uh, so we have that card. And uh, let's see, I can't remember which expansion did that card come out in? Uh, Dark Moon Race, or Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. Uh, of the course, other. that makes sense, because that, that was a very old God-themed expansion. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I remember a lot of a lot of people, no one ever paid much attention to this card as a card, but when I saw it, I'm like, ah, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the more recent uh, creations of the old gods. Uh, basically, uh, corrupted humans that are kind of semi-turned into faceless. Not quite faceless, but uh, it's uh, it's Nazoth's latest branding attempt, I suppose. <laughs> uh, it's like, okay, let, let, let's see if I can come up with a new look here. Um, so, so he just watched the Pirates of the Caribbean films, and he was like, <laughs> Davy Jones. Yes. That's the aesthetic I'm looking for. Nailed yes, it. exactly. Uh, so um, there's a whole quest that you go through in, when you're playing the Battle for Azeroth expansion of World of Warcraft about uncovering what has happened with the Tide Sages and taking out uh, Lord Stormsong and helping to rescue the fleet because Queen Ajara has trapped the entire Kul Tiran fleet in this eternal storm. But uh, once uh, once this is dealt with and uh, Lady Janet Proudmoore actually ends up becoming the Grand Admiral of uh, the nation of Kul Tiras, uh, following in the footsteps of her father, then she is able to use the power that helps to bring the fleet home and out of that store uh, that storm where they can in turn aid the alliance in, uh, in ongoing conflicts. Um, and so that was that was one of uh, Nazoth and Ashara's uh, plans. They were trying to get control of the fleet there. Didn't quite work, but Ashara has more to come uh, because 
there is another stage a bit later on in the expansion. Uh, there is this knife that uh, we meet. This actually is uh, was originally a weapon that uh, priests wielded back in the Legion expansion. Her name is Zalatath, and no one knows exactly what she is. It's called the Blade of the Black Empire. All the way from there, there have been theories that maybe she is like a sentient part of an old god that was kind of, you know, torn off of the body and has amazing power. Maybe she's even another old god or old god-like creature that is imprisoned in this knife. No one really knows for sure what she is, but she's made a deal with Nazoth because she wants to get out of this dagger that she's stuck in. Because so far, all she can do is, throughout history, uh, like, trick and manipulate people into wielding her to do all sorts of evil stuff. But uh, she's still just stuck as a dagger. So, she manages to manipulate whatever your player character is into gathering several important artifacts that will help to... Uh, get them out of the hands of Naga, who are going to try to create this huge storm that will encompass all of Azeroth. Uh, but one of the things that happens is what one of these relics is called the Void Stone. It's being wielded by this high elf sorceress, and you kill her, and Zalatath decides that she's going to take over that body. So that's our little image here. Oh. She's like, ah, it's been so long since I had a mortal form. Uh, you know, being something aside from just a knife. So, that is, she essentially is reanimating this corpse and taking it over, and she's like, hmm, I look good. <laughs> like, she, she essentially <laughs> like says that. Yeah. Uh, she's like, hmm, the appearance is pleasing, is it not? Uh, because so, elves. That's great. Hey, so in Hearthstone, where this presents itself, because, I, you know, before the show we were chatting, and I was like, Oh, what I, I wish I could find a picture for this. this is not in Hearthstone. You're like, actually, it is in Hearthstone. Uh, so this is one of the treasures that you get from Queen um, uh, Ashara. Ashara, um, right? So, so you know, five treasures, um, you know, are are buried into your deck, and you have to dredge them up. And this is one of them here. And so, without you know, again, without knowing the story behind it, you just think, oh, well, this is kind of cool. But like. Wow, this is really rich. So uh, it's super cool. Yeah, each of those treasures has uh, something behind it. Again, we're going to go over that in the special dedicated lore episode. But uh, Zalatath here is the only one that has a mind of her own and uh, manages to manipulate the player character, again, whoever you are, whatever you are, into bringing all of these artifacts down into as an area deep beneath Stormsong Valley in Kul Tiras called the Shrine of Storms, where there is a little bit of Nazoth that seems to be there. That's the eye image that we're looking at right there. And uh, in exchange, uh, it's like these uh, things are brought that help to empower Nazoth somewhat. And in return, he severs her bond to the dagger she just kind of goes, opens up this void portal, says, hey, I know we're going to meet again. And disappears, and she hasn't been in the game uh, as to this point, but she'll be back at some point. We just have no clue what what she is, what she's planning. Um, but, you know, it can't be any good. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to have to see for that. But at this point, that means the dagger is still here, but it's empty. And the Horde ends up picking this up and delivering it to their war chief, Sylvanas, who happens to have some very sinister cosmic scale plans going on here about orchestrating a war and trying to create as much death as possible so that she can fuel this evil death god. And that's a whole other story here. <laughs> uh, it's been in, in from the, the Shadowlands expansion that's actually just wrapping up as we're recording this. Um, but. Basically, uh, she arranges that 
uh, Zalatath, the, the dagger, again, it's empty right now, is brought to Queen Ajara. And the Horde and Alliance kind of end up shipwrecked and trapped in Nashatar, which is the capital city of the Naga that they built around the ruins of the sunken city of Zinashari, a.k.a. where the next expansion is taking place. Yeah. And uh, again, we're not going to go into everything that happens there, but essentially what we get, and this is stuff that's on our next slide here, uh, is that Queen Ajara, uh, this is all part of her plan, where she uh, manipulates them into chasing her down and powering up this ancient titan artifact uh, with, with what is called the Heart of Azeroth. Essentially, it's something from the world soul of Azeroth itself. That's an entire mechanic in uh, in that expansion where you're like powering it up, absorbing this thing called Azerite, which is the blood of the world, etc. A whole other tangent. But essentially, Shara tricks uh, the Alliance and Horde into powering up the Titan device that opens Nazoth's cage. And Nazoth gets loose. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> mm hmm Yep, so uh, what hit the whisper? We got an old god that is fully out fully on the loose right now. This is a problem. Yeah. And it just so happens that no one knows where Nazoth is. They scour the whole world, can't find it. Turns out help comes from uh an unexpected place. Rathian. Huh. Uh who you guys remember who Rathian is from last time, right? Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. Uh -huh. And our and our new mercenary friend too. So this is uh one yeah. of you know the the youngest of the of the black dragon flight, right? Uh, who is yeah. our, our our little whelp? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and he uh has now matured out of being a whelp. He's more like a, a juvenile Drake at this point. So he's he's kind of more <laughs> of a teenage dragon than a baby dragon. Um. Uh, but he thankfully has grown a little bit wiser because he honestly made a lot of really stupid mistakes that <laughs> resulted in, uh, like, he was trying to fix everything. Uh, and, oh, I accidentally set events into motion that are going to result in the demonic army invading. My bad. Uh, Oops. But now he's a bit smarter. He is determined to avoid the fate that fell his father, Deathwing, and studying how to stop the corruption of Nazoth. Uh, and so he becomes a major ally. Like, he is the expert. He's studied up on this stuff. He wrote his doctorate thesis on preventing Nazoth corruption here and uh, sets up headquarters in a little area called the Chamber of the Heart, which is actually where the Heart of Azeroth comes from. And they come to the conclusion that by using the power of that Forge of Origination that we talked about a bit earlier before that mm -hmm. uh, Nizoth wanted to actually get a control of, because remember, its purpose is that it purges corruption. They discover that what they can do, uh, this is all on the next slide, by the way, uh, what they can do is if they can find a way to beam this power directly into Nazoth's home of Nyalotha, the sleeping <laughs> city, which is what I referenced in the song. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, in fact, not, it is sometimes referred to as the sunken city, but it's not so much a physical place as like a plane of existence where Nazoth exists free in his entirety, where the Black Empire is in its fullness, and Azoth wants to merge the two worlds together to draw the real world into his horrific vision of what he wants the world to be. In fact, horrific visions are a little uh, minigame thing that you play at this point in the game where uh, in order to build up your resistance and resistance of a uh, special cloak that is your protection from Nizos influence, uh, you go into these corruptions of how he envisions Stormwind and Orgrimmar, which is our uh, top image right here of uh, Nizos' image of a corrupted Stormwind, where 
Everybody is like a Kathir or driven mad and you have to fight them. Even some of the people who you know as allies in the real world, you have to fight their twisted forms that how they would be like if Nazat had his way with them. And uh, this is something for both Alliance and Horde type of characters in both Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Uh, but after all of that resistance is built up, uh, you manage to be able to go into what is the final raid of that expansion, Nihilotha. No longer the Sleeping City, the Waking City. Is that, that, that's a problem. It's a problem <laughs> that it's waking up. <laughs> uh -oh. and, uh, and the essential goal is that you have to set up these, c kind of like you uh, shoot, kind of like it, you're placing mirrors so you can angle a laser to hit a target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you basically go through Nihilotha in the raid, setting up these special Titan uh, reflectors that will angle the beam from the Forge of Origination to hit Nazoth square right in his heart, in, in, his, uh, uh, in his mind even. And Rathian manages to use the empty Zalatath dagger to cut straight through Nazoth's body. It's the only weapon that can damage him. And so that, that's where a part of the plan comes in, too. That's why it was important that we talked about Salatath here. Yeah. Without that dagger, Nazoth could never be defeated. Uh, so thanks to Rathian's knowledge uh, and Nazoth's uh, vulnerability to that dagger. By the way, I should mention that during this raid, uh, you also encounter Queen Azara. You defeat her in that one raid where she manages to trick you into freeing Nazoth, but he uh, retrieved her, revived her, Turns out that she actually wasn't a fan of Nazoth the whole time. Uh, her ultimate plan was to free him so that she could use the dagger to kill him herself and therefore be free from any ties to Nazoth. Or so she says. That's assuming that she's not just lying and manipulating us as a last-ditch effort. And so, yeah, she actually gets away, and she's on the loose now. Um, we have no clue where Queen Natara is either, as uh, as we currently uh, speak. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that image right there is when uh, Nazoth uh, revived her. She's like, <gasps> uh, because it's, you know, like uh, like getting old god CPR, essentially. Ah. <laughs> uh... um, just, I assume, not a pleasant experience. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Nazoth figured out what she was on to, and she's actually being tortured, and you actually rescue her, ironically enough, uh, when she gives you Zalatath. And then you go in and um, finally cut through Nazoth's uh, body, the carapace, get right into his mind, fight and keep your sanity, and finally uh, your allies back in the heart of the chamber manage to beam that right in there and that's our image down there uh from the short little cinematic at the end of the raid uh where it's just completely destroying it and uh because it's that intense power nizoth is utterly destroyed all of nihilotha is utterly destroyed as a plane of existence um we, we do have one little more cameo at the end that's something that takes place in the raid uh because we have our old buddy from Old Doom, Ra, uh, who, again, I, I, I love the Moku Cultist car just because it got this guy in. Frankly, I think with the new Colossal Minion type, that would probably be a good way to get more of like his fellow Ooh. Titan Keepers in as cards with how you know powerful and impressive they are. That might be good for, uh, for a custom card contest at some point, honestly. Hmm. But uh, yeah, Ra essentially was uh, one of the allies that you recruit in order to uh, help to fight against uh, Nazoth's corruption, figure out what's going on. But he got pulled into Nihilotha while he was trying to defend it and actually succumbed to Nazoth's corruption because he, he'd been dealing with severe depression beforehand anyway uh, for reasons that... We don't have time to get into. It's this whole story connected with the Thunder King, Lei Shen, who, you know, there's that shaman skin and everything mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of Mogu stuff. 
Uh, but essentially, Nizad was only just, uh, no, sorry, Ra was only just starting to stave off that depression, and then you get pulled into the realm of just everything bad, and Nizad takes over, and he becomes corrupted, and you have to defeat him. Uh, so he is one of the bosses in that raid on your way to completely defeating Nizoth. Uh, but yeah, that is essentially what, uh... The, the story of this particular old god right here. He was the one who hung back and had, did, did the opportune strikes. Um, maybe there's a strategy in Hearthstone that you could compare that to. Uh, not, the vocabulary is escaping me right now. But, but he played the long game. Made attrition. a few gambles. What? Attrition. A deck yeah, of attrition, attrition. Right? Yep, he played a game of attrition there. And... Uh, they didn't quite pan out because, like, almost succeeded so many times, but the the heroes of Azeroth managed to hold him back every time because player characters. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we, we are so lucky we have plot armor. Otherwise, <laughs> Azeroth would be screwed multiple times over at these uh, dark forces. But yeah, that is the story of Nizoth. Uh, we'll get into more details about his Naga minions, what they were like beforehand, what they're kind of doing a bit more outside Nizoth's influence. Uh, some of them uh, kind of break away a little bit and help Illidan out. There are others who, you know, like Nizoth isn't a thing anymore. What are they doing now? So we can touch on a few more of those topics and all the other cool under the sea stuff from Voyage to the Sunken City next time. Yeah. Um, so before we kind of call it a wrap on Nizoth, um, I, I know that, you know, obviously the, the player character, you know, kills Nizoth and the, the blaze of glory. Is it possible, you know, that Nizoth might still be alive, be it through some sort of like offshoot, like the fish of Nizoth uh, living and then kind of sprouting from that and that kind of chaos developing still Nizoth? You know, like you said, he's had so many plans in motion to try and, you know, take over. Is it possible that he's still there or is it kind of like a definitive no, like... You, you you got him at the seed, like he's you got him at the roots, like you pulled the roots out, like he's he's gone. That is the most likely thing because okay. this thing, old gods are extremely difficult to kill. Uh it is very likely that you know, for ones like uh, Cthune and Yab Saran, who were kind of def defeated in a more conventional way while still in their prisons. It's mm -hmm. very likely they're just kind of knocked back into a more comatose state and could revive at some point. Nazoth was free from the prison and in another plane of existence that was all his own when he was utterly obliterated by a beam created by the Titans specifically for the purpose of eliminating corruption. So okay. if, if anything is going to kill Nazoth, that will very likely do it. That doesn't mean that the world is free from old god influence, though. It's entirely possible that at some point there could be some place where old god souls go, like uh, like pockets of the void, and then eventually they'll all come back stronger than before if we ever get a return to the Black Empire expansion or something like that. Never fully discount that an old god is completely gone, out of action and not a direct threat for now at least. But, uh, if anything was going to take him out, that should do it. But we can't say for 100% sure. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Everybody's homework assignment, go watch the movie Fallen with, with uh, Denzel Washington, and then report back, okay? And we can have a conversation some other time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but uh, I, I, our conversation got me thinking about it, and there's some uh, analogy here. So, so, anyways, um, cool. Well, I'm anxious to pick your brain about uh, many many things Sunken City related, but I suppose we probably should wait on some of those things uh, until we do that particular lore episode, and wait until the we get the rest of the cards um, revealed to see uh if there are any other last minute surprises in store for us so we've got four more days from today until the rest of the cards are revealed and so um mm -hmm. 
still holding out for Nazoth or the Fish of Nazoth, but I can see it. Uh, it's so late in the game with such a major yeah, character. Yeah, I think that we are very likely to get a uh, mini set that focuses a bit more on Nazoth and the Nihilotha elements of things, mm -hmm. largely because since mini sets uh, so far are like the the expansion of a general theme. All of this Nihilotha stuff happens directly after all of the Naga and Queen Azara stuff in World of Warcraft, where, you know, it gets released and everything. So, I think it's possible they could decide to go that route. Maybe they'll decide something else. This is my current working theory at the moment, because as you pointed out before, we did get the fish in the teaser. There's probably something going on there. Yeah, yeah. I had to go back and I had to go back and watch the um the the trailer again and and to see did they did they sneak it in there cuz I remember it's it's if you go to the Play Hearthstone website, you have to scroll a little bit but like the fish is is there like it's it's just hanging out like they do things too intentionally to uh you know they're not just gonna. This. They're not well, just gonna it, like leave it there for flavor and not use it. Like they could use it later. Mm -hmm. uh, like 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 Minnie yeah. said, it's so late in the game that it'd be it'd almost be a little bit weird if they're like, by the way, uh, day of you know the giant card reveal, new Nazoth surprise. <laughs> Although they could, well, and and uh, and I think some best just hearing the story that that Goliath told us tonight too, it's possible that. In in the big card dump, we get the fish of Nazoth, and you know the the fish of Nazoth uh, talking to to the the Naga Queen is kind of what eventually brought Nazoth back out, right? So... That would make sense for a mini set, yeah. And actually, you know what? We yeah. we keep talking about colossal plus six that would take up the whole board. Nazoth could be a neutral colossal with all of those tendrils and everything that just take up that the entire amazing that that's exactly what i'm thinking exactly what i'm thinking oh my goodness all right all right prediction oh my old god right all right <laughs> yes pr predictions uh th these are these are spicy hot takes here i love it i think if it, it makes it's, so much sense though it does instead of oh my yog it'll be oh my nizoth <laughs> nice yeah, I'm 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 really excited for uh for a lot of this stuff. And uh yeah, we, we actually do one of the warlock legendaries that has been revealed as we speak is a faceless old god minion that uh has some uh, connections uh between the uh Naga and the Nazoth stuff, so that's another possible tendril clue that we have there. I'm excited. All right, cool. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up for our lore episode for tonight. Are there any other kind of final hot takes or, or any, any other last minute things before we, we kind of uh, sh shift gears and wrap things up? Uh, nothing from me. I think that we've, uh, we've summed up things pretty well. I'm happy if there's any uh, clarifications that need to be made about uh, Nazoth or whatnot, but uh, he is he, he's, he's a really cool Really cool god, the the master manipulator, the puppet master. Uh such a, a great character that was constantly people were theorizing about who Nazoth was, where Nazoth was, when we would see Nazoth. But here's the fun thing. I uh, you guys may have heard this before, but Hearthstone is the first time we got to see what Nazoth looks like. Yes. Before, long before it was ever, Warcraft uh, had to do its design based off of how the Hearthstone artist chose to depict Nazoth when he finally appeared as a raid boss, which I just find so cool that uh, that element, that that key thing that Hearthstone played in contributing to Nazoth's lore. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's so cool to be able to uh, yeah unveil the i you know the character or the artwork before it was in the game even like I, it's just incredible so yeah i love it that's that's awesome hearing this story and even just so many of the um like emotes from the nazoth uh uh hero portrait with the whisper chaos comes he whispers and you know mm -hmm. weaving that that kind of grima worm tongue style like yes. corruption just like 
so many pieces are falling into place. And as I play now more with the Nazoth hero card, which I will, of course, be re-equipping. <laughs> Same. I will do that too. Uh, it, it'll just like, I'll, I'll be thinking back to this like constantly throughout and I'm even more excited. You can bet we're going to get some great back and forth between when a player is, has the Nazoth hero card and when someone has the new Ashara one. Oh, that's going to be great. We're going to have I some custom wait. lines for that, guaranteed. Oh, uh, we're going to have to test that out. That's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and okay. So if you could, there's a bunch of websites, but you can um, you can play all all the sounds here, and there are so many uh, special triggers here. Um, Sacrifice. Oh my goodness, that's super loud. Is that loud for you guys? Uh, that was a little loud for me. Yes. Uh, but that that's when you use the hero power that uh, taps your life. Yeah. Yeah, he has uh, he has a few different uh, interactions. Remember, he has one with uh, the Thunder King, where he talks about uh, like he calls him a child of the Titans um, because you know he's, he has that connection. The Titans are diametrically opposed. Uh, mm -hmm. He has a special one with Garrosh because Garrosh had that thing where he absorbed the heart of Yasharaj. We talked about last time. Yes. He's like, our gifts are not your weapons, War Chief. Uh, and it's like, he, he, ha he has some great ones. Weapons, war chief. There we go. Yeah, okay, okay. So you, you know. Titans, your time has come. Mm -hmm. Long have I whispered to you. You two oh. have heard the calling from the deep. Long have I whispered I to you? He's not in the death lane. nations of your dark heart. Such gifts are bestowed on your people, your queen. That's that's for Lady Vosh, and then yeah, and then here's uh, which makes sense because she's a Naga, and then here's for Deathwing. Uh -huh. World breaker, you heard my call in the deep. Mm hmm. So now you know where all of those come from. That These is so good. And the sleeping city shall awaken. That's Nihilotha, the waking city. My hand is full. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we all know what that one means. Back to sleep. Actually, that makes sense. Like all of these make sense now when you when you listen to um the uh you mean even this like back to sleep or uh mm -hmm. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Oh yeah. And hey, hey, th these are so perfect. Like, y okay. So, so just I imagine this, right? Uh, Queen of Charge underwater can't breathe. Little fishy comes up. I can save you from what is to come. These oh my gosh, that's perfect. <laughs> These are yes, frequently throughout the raid, Nazoth keeps trying to address you, the player champion, as his champion, saying, you know, come, you know, give in, fight for me. There's an even greater evil coming than me, and only I can protect you from it. It's like constantly saying that sort of thing, trying to bestow his gift upon you, uh, which you uh, can choose to either keep or get cleansed. There were some players who, uh, like, considered themselves to be agents of Nazoth and, like, kept, like, the little, uh, purple eye on their forehead throughout the game. Oh, that's cool, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. Welcome, my devoted chosen. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. All right, all right, all right, but here's, here's the greatest one of all. Yo. Pirate day, it's yes. Pirate day. <laughs> I forgot about pirate day. Oh. They all have one. Yo ho oh, ho ho. <laughs> oh, I love it. These are great. These are. Oh, we could play these all night long. But uh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, hey, this this was this was great. Thank you so much for sharing the story with us. I cannot wait until uh we get to learn even more and see what else is in in store for um right there with you. I can't wait to tell it. 